Halton Real Estate Investors Group. Since 2010, I help many people, including first-time investors, make millions of dollars with their side hustle of investing in nice homes in nicer areas west of Toronto, such as Hamilton, St. Catharines, Niagara Region, Brantford, and Cambridge, Ontario. The goal of Halton REI's to entice would-be real estate entrepreneurs to get off the couch, make things happen, and replicate the success of our multi-millionaire clients. Those who choose to work with the Halton REI team will have the opportunity to be coached by a highly skilled and highly successful investor coach who has walked the walk, having owned numerous properties, earning thousands in cash flow each month, who is licensed to trade in real estate. Listeners to this show can go to www.haltonrei.ca slash sign up to register. But when I checked this morning, we have only eight seats left, so please do register as soon as possible to avoid disappointment. One of the secrets to success is to surround oneself with successful people. And in my 10 plus years of attending workshops and networking events, this is one of the best places to be. So I hope to see you soon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, investors across the greatest country in the world. My name is Erwin Sito, bringing you the Truth About Real Estate Investing show for Canadians, where it is my job to bring you experts in the world of investing. We will learn from their experience, pick out their lessons, tips and tricks, and figure out what makes them tick so you too can replicate their success. This week, I'm excited to bring to you all the way from Kingston, Ontario, Rene Mass, who has been working with tenants for over 20 years, as he did grow up alongside them living in his home. Rene has invested for 10 years, having reached the significant milestone of earning $5,000 cash flow per month from student rentals after six years, and he did so investing only 14000 of his own money. That's an incredible return on investment, considering Rene quit his teaching job three months in, giving up that steady paycheck and pension and job security for the entrepreneurial life. This is after years of university and teacher's college at Queen's University while graduating with debt. Rene definitely has no interest at all in being average and is truly living his life on on his terms. You'll see from the interview uh, I where I did not ask him one single question I had prepared. That's how the, the, the interview went. <laughs> Rene also produces a series of entertaining and ed- educational videos on the subject of real estate investing. He has extensive experience in hiring university students to work in his business and also for uh, hiring them as his assistants, uh, including doing his video production and editing. And he'll share how he does it. So without further ado, I present to you Rene Mass. Let's, let's talk about the mindset. Are you okay with that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, what about mindset? Oh, I love mindset. Love it. Love it. I think all of it is mindset. All of it. The pure everything. So in any business, if you want, uh, I found that when I, my businesses grew, it was it was through personal growth. Mm-hmm. So it's personal growth, and the business follows along with it. So mindset is is key. I think it's it's uh, having a clear mindset. The focus, the the, the calmness, definitely helps to achieve achieve uh, greater success okay 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 before we get into it let's give the listeners an idea of who you yep. are uh, so you're from Kingston sounds good okay and I'm actually from you... Toronto originally oh, okay from Toronto yeah from Toronto born and raised in Toronto mm-hmm. but I went to Queens and then never left because it was such a beautiful place yeah I've been to Kingston uh, I've, I've done one of your uh, Thousand Island tours yes it's quite lovely <laughs> Oh, I got, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I got a bit lucky. I was on the very, very, very last tour of the summer, and it was windy and the waves were high, mm-hmm. and I did not feel well after. The <laughs> 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 scenery was gorgeous, <laughs> but it was like, you know, the it horizon was, was bobbing yeah, up and down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's world-renowned. It's really world renowned. It's it's uh, a lot of people from Kingston don't even don't even appreciate all that much. They don't really see it. Hmm. So what year was that? What so uh, what universe? I'm guessing your university oh, yeah. age. So, so I went to Queens. I uh, started in '93, graduated in '99. I was on the six year program. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> really had a good time, mm-hmm. and uh, never left because uh, I really enjoyed it here. It was such a nice place. I didn't want to go back home to live with my parents. It came down to it. <laughs> okay. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of parents. As a student. I'm sure a lot of people with, with, with older students, older older kids, all of it, were like, oh, I wish I, my kids were like Renee. <laughs> well, no, no, no. You didn't, you didn't meet my parents. I mean, they're, they're great, great people. But you understand, uh, my father's always been kind of the entrepreneur. We would leave for the summer, and he'd rent out our rooms. 
Nice. We'd I'd come back after a summer month. It was great. We had like tons of family vacations because of it. And there'd be like lipstick on my, on my, on my desk. There would be like perfume. It was like my room was rented out. It mm-hmm. was Toronto. That's what, that's how they, they get, they got by, uh, back in the eighties and nineties. Wow. It's a, it's a huge market now, like at the Airbnb and all, but I can, right, mm-hmm. I digress. So you stayed in Queens. Why did you stay in Queens? Yes. And what did you do when you stayed in Queens? Did you start investing right away? Oh, or? yeah. So, no, no, no. I didn't start right away. So um, my summer job was uh, basically cleaning windows and, and painting. And mm-hmm. so I did that for that. That paved my way through uh, university. It, mm-hmm. it actually paid. I didn't have any debt, really. When I came down to it, I it's only when I went to teacher's college. Then I had, then they gave me like a $10,000 loan. That's when I got into debt. But prior to that, I was surviving on just hustling a uh, uh, summer months, just cleaning windows, painting all the time. It was just, uh, it was just knocking on doors, calling. Like it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a survival game when it came down to it. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what did you graduated? Then you started a career. What was that? <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, you didn't continue painting at all. <laughs> No, no, but but what I did is, uh, so I became a teacher mm-hmm. and uh, speaking French. Although I'm from Toronto, I speak French. My parents spoke to me in French. I responded back. I had to, if I wanted to be fed, I had to speak French. Hmm. So um, they, anything, if you got to teach, it, you're teachable, is French, they're going to make you teach French. But the thing is, is I didn't learn French the way, <laughs> the way students learn French in the classroom. You know? yep. So it was just, it was, it was, it was brain numbing. I just didn't quite enjoy it. Uh, it was also the, the discipline. I had to discipline the kids. It wasn't as, I wasn't good at that. I didn't really care for that all that much. So I really didn't teach all that. I taught for three months. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was on a way to, to teach. I had the, you know, the summers off, I had the, the pension, the, the benefits and all that. And after three months, I'm like, this isn't for me. It just did not feel right. And I just quit. And uh, believe me, people weren't too thrilled about that. They, they, were, <laughs> they were like, what? <laughs> you did six years of university. Like, you're just quitting there. Like you're a quitter. They thought I was on drugs. They thought there was issues with me. They were just, they thought the worst. I mean, my, my sister, my brother, they had their house. They were starting their family. Everything was working well. And I, here I am just quitting. And then what do I do? I go back to what I was doing in university. I mean, mm-hmm. I had built up the business, so I started off from that. And so I was, the oddly enough, at the time, it, was, it wasn't it was all that uh, rosy, but I was I was probably the most educated painter, window cleaner in Kingston, or probably <laughs> Ontario, right. for, for a moment. But what, <laughs> what kept me going was that I knew that I was, I could do more. I wasn't just, like, it was just a stepping stone. Like, I was, I could, I saw the benefits of what I could do. And I knew that I could achieve more. So it was just, uh, you know, when you do a leap, you don't, you don't sky, you don't jump straight up, you mm-hmm. jump down <laughs> and then you, you kind of get back up. So, mm-hmm. so now I'm, I'm in a, a very good position now, but it, it didn't come easy. Mm-hmm. It, so, you know, <laughs> wow. I can only imagine what your parents were thinking. <laughs> Uh, so oh, no, 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 no. My, uh, the, <laughs> my father would, would tell people, my, uh, my mother, my father, and my mother would tell people, oh yeah, he's, he's teaching. And I hadn't taught in three years. Uh-huh. So they were just lying to people because, they, you know, oh, he's in Kingston. Nah, good thing he's not in jail. He's not in jail. He's, he's working, <laughs> you know, they would just, so yeah, they weren't too, they dealt with it well, but, uh, it's cause my, both my parents weren't entrepreneurs. They, so taking that route was uh, was very risky, and I can imagine as as a parent myself, I wouldn't necessarily. Uh, now I understand it because I'm in the position. But for them, they worked in government, they worked for schools. Mm. It was a different ball game. So uh, different mindset. So it wasn't this. It's a different mindset, and it comes down to it as I think sometimes you got really basically two doors. You got the independent door and the security door. Well, for some reason, I did not care for the security door. I wanted the independence. I wanted the freedom. I wanted the, just to do what I wanted to do, right. whatever it was. That's a good way to put it. But you grew, you grew your, your painting window cleaning business, right? Like, I understand you offer like a yeah, full it's, it's, range it's, of renovation now. That's right. That's right. So that's, that's one of the ways I got into the investing is I could buy a property. But I, was, I was actually doing it for others. 
Mm-hmm. It was actually uh, it was people who work in a Queens and they were buying properties, so the rentals fixing them up and then renting out. So mm-hmm. uh, I saw I saw what I was going to do, and I, I I believed that I could do the same thing. So I would buy low, renovate it, and then force appreciation out, take out some equity, and buy something else. To, you know, build up from there. So I I I got into the real estate investing. At, oddly enough, as a contractor, but. Uh, I'm really not that handy with my hands, mm-hmm. but what I I always believed I could do is I could always talk to people. I could always convince people. And for a while I was, when I started off, I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do mm-hmm. that. And really I couldn't do anything, but I would hire people to help me out. Mm-hmm. So I would learn through those I hired and that's, that's how it grew. Very cool. And what year was this that you started, uh, that you started actually doing your own investing? It, it was, it was about 2003, 2004, 2005. That's when I got started. Yeah. So it really, it, it pans out after, I mean, it's, it's not a quick, quick scheme, quick rich scheme. It's, it takes, takes time. It's only after five years that it really helped when I was to be able to refinance it and then grow a bit more. It's the refinancing that helped a lot and the force appreciation and just keep mm-hmm. on going. Just, just, just basically just, uh, just, just be persistent with it. Like any business, if you keep up with it, uh, no matter what business, it it pans out. You got to be persistent with it day in, day in, day in all the time. Mm -hmm. Can you share some numbers, like how many properties or how many students you have in, in, in under management? I don't necessarily manage. I only manage what, uh, my investors and myself own. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the nice thing with student rentals is the cash flow. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're not talking like a hundred dollar cash flow, you know, two hundred. We're talking like in the five hundred to a thousand. Like we, if it's between five hundred and a thousand cash flow when we buy it, that's a good buy. Mm-hmm. And then after a year or two, we maximize it, try to minimize the expenses, just the fundamentals on that, and then it, it reaches into a thousand. So you don't really need that much in order to. Uh, for one to not necessarily quit one's job, you, you know, I, I believe I'm a firm believer of of working. I've had that option as a contractor for many for several years in the beginning. I'd work a lot during the summer months, you know, spring, summer, and then off for the winter months. And it wasn't all that. Uh, I was pleasant for a while, but it was boring as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to, yeah. So with student rentals, you can actually acquire a lot more cash flow each and every month. So you don't really need all that much in order to, uh, you know, not that I've quit my job. I, I've, I've, I still do the painting. Uh, I still have all the painting business on the side. Mm-hmm. And uh, the nice thing is that I've got staff who've been with me for over five years. So they're there on a regular basis. I tend to delegate a lot to them. Awesome. Yeah. So you have a lot of experience hiring people. Very cool. Very cool. Um, well, why the decision uh, to invest in student? Why, why this? Why the decision to target students versus everyday Kingstonians? Is that right, Kingstonian? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, Kingstonians. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the one thing with students, because I, I was a student myself, I understood their, I understood what they were looking for, and I could easily cater to them. And I liked the, the tenant profile. They had a, they had purpose and meaning in where they lived and what they were doing. Um, that's what I like dealing with students. They're, they're more interesting. In fact, my first house I bought to where I lived, I lived with students. I, I just lived in the living room and the dining room and they lived in the, in the apartments or the bedrooms upstairs. And um, I specifically chose people that I'd, I'd get along with. And I, I figured obviously mature student cause I wasn't a student at the time, mm-hmm. but second of all, I was looking for people who spoke French so I could practice my French. So I, I lived with a couple of, uh, of uh, PhD students, and then one person was he was he lived he worked at a, at a moving company, so he was never there. So it worked really worked out well. So it's <laughs> choosing the right people the best that tenants. helped to grow. To, yeah, the, the, the best tenants, definitely the best tenants. Yeah, right. Sure. For uh, what would you tell investors who are afraid of student rentals as an investment vehicle? Mm-hmm. Um, think back to when you were a, a student. 
mm-hmm. exactly to what you were looking for. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't trash my place when I was when I was uh, a student. With students, with pretty much anybody, if the place is clean, and you keep in mind, I'm coming from a contractor perspective as well. Uh, painting a room or painting a place is pretty cheap for me. Like I've got, I've got painters at my disposal, and I, I pay them not by the, I pay them by the hour. So, just painting it, keeping it clean, mm-hmm. people tend to keep it clean as well. So mm-hmm. that that definitely is is a key, regardless if it's student rental or not. With students, I'd also say that there's a wide range of students. There's the college students. There's the high school students. You want to avoid. You know, the, the, then there's the college students, which aren't bad, but for the most part, they tend to be younger and um, less mature. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the first year students and the second year students. And then I usually go for the master students. Ideally, you want upper end students or master students, and then there's there's really no issues. But those are really once again stereotypes. So. I interview pretty much everybody who walks into one of their rentals and I, I just get a sense of who they are, what they're looking for. And I also target indirectly what I'm looking for as well. So I, I'll, I'll tell them, I'll say, well, um, there's, I'll, I'll sell the, I'll sell the house based on the people that are there already. So I'll say, well, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a master of, of engineering there. He's, he's very studious, quiet, and clean. So I'm sure if you're like that as well, you'll get along with this individual. So mm-hmm. I'm already kind of prepping them on what the appeal of the house, and what we're looking for, and what, what's already there. And so a lot of people just uh, eliminate themselves because that's not what they're looking for. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not an easy process. It does take a bit of time. Mm-hmm. But the nice thing with students is that uh, it's only done at the end of August or beginning of of February or sometimes in the in November. But that's that's for like the first year students. First year students look in uh, in November, December, or sometimes even as early as October. Yeah, yeah. What I've noticed is when when I was in school <laughs> back in. 98 <laughs> dating myself mm-hmm. obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were we we would we didn't look at, at property until after christmas holidays so like the first week of january yeah it seems that uh, it's moved mm-hmm. up <laughs> yes it has it has just i think it's it's um perhaps they've instilled a bit of fear because they're like i want to get something good I want to. I want to live with this person, this person, this person, and then there, there's like a, a the moment they've got their clique, they start looking for a place. It's maybe uh, just human nature to uh, to be able to. Once you've got the people that surround you, you want to just have a, a place to live with them. You know, that's mm-hmm. maybe it's it's um, it's basic uh, instinct. That, that just also and tells also me that you, you probably it. have a bit of a housing shortage on, in Kingston. I imagine. Um, it's not Kingston the same is changing like every market in Kingston. They haven't stopped the building student rentals. Mm-hmm. I mean, it seems as if, uh, people are catching on to the beauty of student rentals in Kingston. Cause it's, it's, it's there. It's all, it's grouped all together in one location. So mm-hmm. now they're building more and more. So it's going to change a bit of the, uh, of the terrain. However, as an entrepreneur, I've always been able to maneuver. I've always been able to, to change with the times. I mean, I've been mm-hmm. an entrepreneur for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. So I'm not too concerned. What we've done is uh, we've bought places uh, that aren't necessarily – because if you're looking right, right by the university, you're going to pay top dollars, and the cash flow may not be there. But mm-hmm. in the periphery, you can get some good deals, and if you offer furnish, furnished places – you get more options as well. And then you, know, oh, okay. you get international students, you get the mature students, you get people. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a gamble at times because sometimes mm-hmm. if you get international students, they're only there for eight months or sometimes four months, but I, we've eliminated the four months because we, we just feel it's just such as we like doing, we like showing the place, the people, you know, doing it during Christmas time. is not ideal. So, you know, the September to December, but sometimes in certain situations we have used the four months. And then another thing about the student rentals, as you know, is uh, they rent starting in May, and they're not even there during the summer months. So we mm-hmm. can we can renovate and fix up the place while they're not there. 
Mm-hmm. And then when they do come in, uh, there's a few, there's preventive maintenance that can be done during the summer months. That, that is key. When I used to do a bit of property management for others, they weren't prepared for the arrival of the students. And then there was a big upheaval about, oh, we need to rush this emergency there. It just, it was silly. So there's a, there's four months out of, out of a whole year where most often they may not even be there, or maybe there may be one of them that's there found some work in Kingston and work can be done. And then once they come around in September, all the little things are taken care of. So they just walk in and then after two weeks, they they become very quiet. They, they start getting into studies and then, and then, uh, you don't really hear them all that much. Mm-hmm. All right. Very good. All right. I, I think we talked about it. There's so many other things I want to ask you. That's why I, I love talking about student rentals, but there's so much other things I want to talk to you about. Uh, you produce a lot of video. Uh, sure. Before we actually, before, um, yes, I where do. can people yeah. find your video? Where can people find your videos? Oh, so so the best way to find my videos is just Google my name, name Ass, and then uh, you'll, you'll you'll come up. This is is this Facebook. You've got your own YouTube channel. I'm on LinkedIn. It's not hard to find uh, the videos. So just just befriend me on on Facebook, and then you'll you get a a regular viewing of them. Excellent. I'll, I'll include a link as well for those listening in the show notes, so you don't have to you know if you're driving, <laughs> you don't have to write this down. Can you can you spell your name for people? <laughs> Yeah, sure. It's Rene, R-E-N-E, Mass, M-A-S-S-E. Right. You don't have to do the accent over your over the Rene, the E. <laughs> um, no, I mean my my yeah. Oh, well, that yeah, sure. Yeah, you could do the accent on Rene if you want to. If it's on your keyboard, <laughs> it, it works both ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's only one Rene Mass who advertises like I do, so I'm sure you'll find me. Got it. Got it. And again, I'll include the links. Uh, so what? Can you tell the listeners what your videos are about and how often you do it? I think it's this the teacher within me that's coming out. Um, <laughs> not French, like, though. So it's a combination of educating and entertaining. Yeah. Not French, exactly, not French. So it's, it's the perspective I, I took is anything I'm learning, I learn better if I'm going to be teaching it to somebody else. Got it. And over the years, I didn't even realize how much wealth knowledge I acquired. So, uh, as much as I, I like writing, but mm-hmm. I'm not big on grammar mm-hmm. and, um, podcasting seems a bit on the long side for me. So I just figured I would produce short videos that mm-hmm. answered solutions for other, for other investors or investors that are starting off. Mm-hmm. And I, I add a bit of humor in there. So it becomes entertaining <laughs> and educational at the same time. I saw one yeah. where you were. Uh, <laughs> you gotta have a sense of humor in this. I think you were wearing like a Mexican sombrero and you were juggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it is. Uh, yes, I was. I, I did. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did do that. Yes, I didn't. I didn't think anyone would see that because it's at the end of the video. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you got to make it fun. Awesome. And one thing I'd like to comment on is that your video production is quite good. Uh, is that you? Or are you getting help? Uh, how's that getting done? Thank you, thank you. So, um, I I hired a student in the summer months. I mean, um, my business has been based on students. I, I I help students find accommodation. I've hired students in the beginning for for the company. Mm-hmm. I've hired students for years with the marketing, for the telemarketing. Uh, for the canvassing as well, that was that was a, a huge part of it. I mean, students want to stay in Kingston, so there's an so there's influx of, of good labor, but also intelligent labor. I mean, they don't have to be fully experienced, but if they like what they're doing, they're mm-hmm. willing to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So when it came down to uh, making videos, I realized that uh, as much as I like making videos, I didn't really like doing the editing part of it. And, and one thing I learned was do what you enjoy doing, delegate the rest. So mm-hmm. I found someone to do the editing, and I called it the uh, branding marketing. And uh, in the beginning, I was, I was actually getting a lot of uh, college students who had been going through marketing program. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, I met this one student from Queens who was studying engineering, chemical engineering, and it turns out she just loved making videos. She just loved the editing part of it. It was her passion. So <laughs> she, she was, you know, I'd seen what she had done before 
And just, just talking with her, I got a sense that it didn't matter how much I was paying her. It wasn't the money. Because the others were, were like, I'd like this much. Because I, I gave them the option. I said, well, what about compensation? So I didn't tell them this is how much I'm going to be paying you. I had an idea, but I was asking them. So a lot of them knew what they wanted, how much they wanted to get paid. And it seemed as if it was just going to be a job. But with this particular individual, it was more of a passion. It was more of a, of a love of, edit, of editing and of doing videos. So uh, I took a gamble and it worked out well. Right. Did she tell you, or did she, she show you her, her portfolio? Did she show you her portfolio? She had a few videos that she had done. No, no I mean she's a she's an engineer student, so she doesn't. She didn't have. She had a few videos that she had done. Mm-hmm. But what it came down to is that she, she, I think she wanted to stay in Kingston for her boyfriend, mm-hmm. and that she really had a passion for arts. Like she, even though she was in science, she did not, or in engineering, she did not want to be doing an engineering job. She did it last year and it was boring. She was bored out of her mind. So she had an artistic background and she just, she showed me a few videos that she had done and some that she had done or she liked. And also I told her, what would you improve in my videos? And she was polite about it because at the time in the beginning, they were, they were pretty rough. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, um, it was a bit of gamble and it worked out. Okay. And when, when did you start doing videos? I started doing videos about a year ago, but I got into, into it more uh, back in uh, back in May, May 2017. Got it. And uh, what kind of terms should people expect to, to pay a student salary, hourly? How long did you have her? Just for the summer? Mm-hmm. It, just, it varies. Her? Just for the summer, yeah. Just for the okay. summer. Uh, okay. Like, she does a bit on the side, but obviously the what takes press is her studies. She's in fourth year engineering, so that's quite a workload. It, it varies. It really depends on the student. It depends on your budget. Depends. Um, I mean, there's some students that are, aren't. They're not worth their, the time and effort they put into it. Mm-hmm. But if if um, what I found, and this this may be just, I found that those who enjoyed what they were doing, and it wasn't about the money, it, it made a difference. Mm-hmm. And they were learning along the way that helped having a having a basis if they had done it in the past i mean i i wasn 't willing to show them everything. it was just too time consuming Another aspect was uh wh- having hired students for the past twenty years i 've noticed that um, students who have gone through uh, private education for some reason they seem to be wittier sharper um, mm-hmm. Uh, willing to work more. No kidding. So, uh, the, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I mean, as an educator, I, I've, I've, it's just an observation. I'm not saying that private education is better than, than uh, public. Yeah. However, I've, I've just noticed that if you're paying for something, you get something, you get something of value. So, um, mm-hmm. My experience was pretty hit or miss in school. Like some of the people that went to private school, especially the boarding school people, like university was their first taste of freedom and they just lost control. <laughs> it, yeah, I guess it depends on which uh, which school, which private school it is as well. Yeah, it's a hit and miss. It's not, I'm not saying that all private students, uh, private, private school students are, are brilliant and they, mm-hmm. they, they achieve great success. I'm just saying with the, you know, what I've noticed is the students I've hired in the past, those who've excelled, those who've done better than I expected, those mm-hmm. who stood out, those who stood out from the crowd, right. had uh, private education. Right. And, and does that does that include the people you hired to do like contracting work, to do painting and window cleaning? Oh yeah, yeah. Even even yeah, I started uh, window cleaning as well years ago. Even window cleaning, it was uh, also with canvassing. I'd hire anybody for canvassing, anyone who wanted to. to to uh, to stick it out for canvassing, and it wasn't the easiest part of it. I mean, it didn't pay much, and mm-hmm. it was only a couple hours. Uh, uh, it was it was an hour and a half during the day, mm-hmm. uh, Monday to fr- Monday to Thursday. But it was those who had the good attitude who stuck around, and if it was fun, and I made it fun, then they they stuck around. And then there was one one guy in particular. Um, he just had a really good attitude and he, and he just made it funny. He's like, yeah, this is just for laundry change. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing other, other jobs. This mm-hmm. is not like, this is fine. I'm having fun with it. And then I, 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 
I brought him in to do a bit of the bookkeeping in the beginning, and I kind of showed him how to do a few things, mm-hmm. you know, expenses and then payroll. And um, he just had a good attitude, and he had gone to, uh, yeah, he went through uh, private school. And then I think he actually became president of the uh, <laughs> of the student. Uh, yeah, he, he he did well. He did very well for himself. I'm not sure where he is now, but he did well. His name was Ken. Ken Lee, I believe. You should track him down and see what he's doing. If you become student council yeah, president, yeah, you usually, should, should. you're usually on a yeah. pretty good trajectory. <laughs> oh yeah, he did. Yeah, his his parents uh, his parents from from China, and uh, his father sold. BMWs, and often people would ask him, "So where, where's your BMW?" And he goes, "Oh, my BMW's in Kingston, He's studying." You know, so they, they threw all his all their money to towards uh, this this the one child they had. Right, yeah, international school's not cheap. No, no. Uh, could you give us some examples of how you made the work fun to make the kids more engaged? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. So I would. Um, just having um, a positive attitude that definitely helped. Positive energy as well. Just just bumped up that energy where you know you're going to do this, do this. And I would I would show them. I would show them exactly how to canvas. It wasn't mm-hmm. complicated. Uh, that that's that's. I gave them a script, and then I would encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. So maybe it comes uh, comes with my nature to simply encourage people. But yeah, I would I would show them what to do. High energy, positive attitude, and plenty of encouragement. Okay. And, and how many students have you hired uh, for non-contracting work, like like the like your video editing engineer? Have you done that much? Oh no! Now I I tend to uh, to the students I deal with now are more for accommodations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And then uh, where so would you okay, ever- occasionally? I I have yeah. Sorry, finish your thoughts. Yes. Go ahead. Well, I, I have hired. Uh, sometimes we do a lot of work. We do a fair amount of work for Queens, um, and sometimes they need furniture moved. So <laughs> I'll hire some of my tenants. Yeah, so they're great. They're, I just I just text them. I'll just say, Do you know of anyone who, you know, who's willing to uh, to make um, who's available Friday to move furniture? And so sometimes they go, No, I don't know, but I, I I'm available. So. So I've, I've had that in the past. But overall, I don't necessarily hire as many students as I used to. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, let's move on to uh, this mindset thing. Well, well, as a, sorry, we, we, uh, we hadn't prepared for this. <laughs> but you said you okay. started off by saying how important it was. Can, can you tell our listeners uh, oh, yeah. about that? So I, I found over the years of being an entrepreneur that uh, one can be very, very busy, but not make a lot, of, not make much money. Mm-hmm. So what it came down to it is is spending time on things that work. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the things that that it's beyond someone's comfort zone. So you need to be prepared mentally to uh, to be uncomfortable. Yeah. And uh, it just it just clicks in sometimes where we're in an uncomfortable situation and fear kicks in. And if one is able to maintain a, a level of mindset of, of clear calmness, you're able to push yourself more. It just I mean a good example is just going to the gym. I, I work out on a regular basis and I enjoy it. And I realize that in order to push yourself or physically, and what happens physically, you know, it stems mentally. You need to be in a calm state. And if your mind is not calm, then you can't push yourself and reach reach beyond what your comfort level is. Mm-hmm. Coming down to the mindset, the one way I like to keep a, a level-headed mindset is through meditation. Meditation mm-hmm. yoga has helped just keeping... Just keeping a, a clear-headed and focus, and just calm, and it's just it's it's just a, a great way to to start the day. I, I yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm big on morning routine, and uh, my morning routine involves uh, meditation and yoga or the gym, and it's it's a game changer in my eyes. It's a game changer because you're able to 
uh, create that mindset. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to the mindset. So what's your style of meditation? Is it silence and then you try to quiet your thoughts or are you working out problems? Mm, yeah, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. There, there's, there's many styles. I'm not one to advocate one style that works. So whatever works with the person. The one I've found to be better, very beneficial for myself is the Vipassana. And it's just a technique that is shown. And the good analogy for to describe meditation, people think it's you, know, you gotta you gotta sit down and then not think of anything. That's not quite that's not quite accurate. It's basically so sure sitting down, then viewing the thoughts go by. Don't hang on to them. Just let them go by. Mm -hmm. And focus on the breath. Focus on the breath. Let the thoughts go by. Don't focus on them. Don't play with them. Don't let them go. Just focus on the breath. Come back to the breath. And then, and from a bit of that experience, then you can go on to uh, to the sensations throughout the body. Just observing the sensations and not reacting. Observing, not reacting. So it's a question of of not reacting to everything. Mm -hmm. And that that enables. It's like a baseline, the default for the rest of the day. So when you come down, if, you, if you've got this uh, practice of yoga or meditation in the, in the morning, then by you know nine o'clock or so, something occurs. You get a phone call. It's an emergency, or you got to. It, it's it doesn't spoil your day. You don't mm -hmm. you don't react to it mm -hmm. with anger or something. You can kind of distance yourself from it and then go, okay, I'm going to attack it this way. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fix this problem. Mm -hmm. But sometimes often we react too quickly and then we let our emotions get away. And then, and then we're not level headed. We're not, we're not calm. We're, we, we can't, we're simply reacting. And then it's, sometimes it's, it's through, uh, through anger or through, uh, through depression. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, I would have, I have great difficulty letting thought just go by without, at least trying to solve them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. True, true. It's, 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 it's to say it's it's easy. No, it's not easy. But there's still benefit. Just just calming oneself for ten, twenty minutes, or even thirty minutes is has benefit to it. Just just mm -hmm. focusing your breath for ten, fifteen minutes during during middle of the day mm -hmm. has great benefit. And then you can kind of go back to the plan. What's the plan of the day? What's your intention? You mm -hmm. that you wrote down the morning of the day. You write it mm -hmm. down, you can go back to it because it's often. I mean we myself included, I you know, by eight o'clock I'm exhausted. I am just watching uh, cat views on YouTube. I mean mm -hmm. I just get my train of thought it's just too it's too difficult to to make that uh, the decision. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've heard of people saying that we only have 20 major decisions to make during the day. After that, we're done. So if you've got to decide on what clothes you wear, that's one decision right there. Decide what, you, what you're going to be eating. There's one, to, there's one there. You're losing all, these, all that power, all that energy to decide mm -hmm. on the major stuff. So I'm, one, I'm big on the morning routine where it's a routine. You already know what you're doing, and you already know what you're doing the night yeah. before. Yeah. You wrote down the intent the intentions, the goals, and then you can go back to it. Yeah. And uh, that, that, that's helped me as well, as well as the tracking log. It's helped me along the way, having a tracking log to, uh, to uh, just, just as simple as marking down what I did, what I didn't do. I know what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Did I do it? Did I not do it? You know, and then you review it every month. Right. I don't know if, they, if our listeners are even interested in the subject, but I, I find it fascinating. I, saw, I was at Archangel. Yeah. yeah, we were both at Archangel. And yeah, Dr. yeah, that's right, that's right. Dr. Chapali said, like, the first education is self-awareness. And I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a lot of, you know, self-development work. Uh, and one of, part of it is, you know, doing, being able to check in with yourself. Like, how am I feeling? Oh, like this hurts or this doesn't feel right or, uh, you know, I feel stressed. And then, then, you, then I naturally just do what I need to do to, to deal with it, right? Like take deep breaths or go for a walk or go stretch or something like that. Yeah. Uh, apparently, a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people just, like, push right through and just make things – It's a skill. Make the problem worse. It, you, you said it right on. It's a, it's a skill. Some, some, some go for, for alcohol or some try to – 
going out with with, uh, with cigarettes or TV. It's a skill to acquire, and it's in the beginning and it's challenging at times, mm-hmm. especially starting any new habit. But it's it's worth it. I, I definitely understand what you're saying. In fact, her first book I wrote, I read her her book, uh, The Conscious Parent. It, the first half is all about meditation. It's all about being aware, being conscious, mm-hmm. being aware of your thoughts, being aware of what your habits are, mm-hmm. and then you could become uh, a better parent. So, yeah, mm-hmm. she's big on to it. Uh, every, everyone at that summit had, um, or a lot of people spoke about meditation, I found, at, the, at that summit. Plus, oh, it's, it's a big another book I'd like to refer to. Mm-hmm. Tons, it's, it's, it's tons huge. of success and, on and The only reason I mention it is... Mm-hmm. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because it's, it has been a game changer for me. It has really helped to pursue and, and uh, pursue my business, pursue my personal life, and, and to grow. It's enabled me to grow much quicker and better at what I do. Interesting. Uh, any, so for anyone who, who's looking to get started at meditation, is there somewhere you would suggest they get started? Um. The Vipassana centers, there's the Vipassana centers all around the world. Uh, it's not linked to any religion. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's basically free. It's by donation only. How do you spell and that? There's a center in uh, Ontario, right out, uh, Vipassana. Uh, it's V-I-P-A-S-S-A-N-A. Yeah, I found and it. There's, there's, what, there's a center, there's a center uh, by Barrie. Mm-hmm. And there's a center in Montebello, Quebec. Uh, I tend to go to the one in Montebello, Quebec, and it's it's just a it's just a technique, simple technique. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is it is kind of based on Buddha's teaching, but it's not Buddhist or anything. It's just it's it's non nominal It's not not religious at all. Mm-hmm. It's just a technique, simple as that. Very cool. Um, I was talking to a younger gentleman the other day about meditation and how he's saying that he can't do it. And my suggestion for people who 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 are more like my level, like the brain doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm on a good level. <laughs> I'm just uh, my 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 brain is like a hamster on a hamster wheel. <laughs> my suggestion for those people, yeah, yeah, I do. I, <laughs> is to I understand. I understand completely. <laughs> my suggestion to those people is, I, you know, just sit in the car with the radio off, and then just let your brain go. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that's a simple first step. <laughs> Or go yes, for a walk. Yes, and it's 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 like, it, yes, a good walk. Yes, a yeah. walk without uh, headphones. Walk is also nice. It's like because um, really, what it comes down to it is is distractions is a way of escaping. Is a way of things that bother us. We 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 get distracted with little things, and more and more we have so much capabilities of being distracted. Our cell phone is a huge distraction at all times. Mm. The thing is, with distraction, you, you can't. One is not able to focus. One is not able to have to see things clearly with all the distractions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something that bothers you, you're, there's boredom. All of a sudden, you, one, or myself included at times, we, you, know, you go to the phone. You go to whatever, whatever app. You go to texting. Mm-hmm. You call. There's, there's so many distractions. And it mm-hmm. just distractions are – it doesn't allow for creativity. And you, in order to live, I find, in order to live well and grow, you mm-hmm. need to create yourself. Mm-hmm. So uh, – that's why I'm, I'm, I'm big on it. That's why I'm, I'm, uh, it's helped me immensely. And uh, for listeners who want to get started, just take the plunge. Go for the 10-day silent meditation for 10, <laughs> <at> the, uh, <laughs> 10 days silent. Yeah, I, that's, what I, that's what I did. And it was, it was great. And it you made like it? I, I you made it 10 days? Out. Well, I... I 10 yeah, days silent I meditation. 10 days. Oh, I, figured, I missed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I, I could handle this. Like, come on. I'm sitting on a cushion for 10 days. How hard can that be? I'll be fine. I'll, I'll live. I'll live. Come on. I've been through a lot tougher situation. Like, I was, I was in Italy for, I was homeless in Italy for like a week. I can handle this, you know. They, they, they feed you. They give you a bed. And it's good food, too. But they just feed you. You can't tell them so, what yeah, you want. For the, <laughs> it's, yeah, you... <laughs> It's good food. It's really good food, and you do. It's also it's a lot, a lot of vegan stuff. I don't think there's any meat, so yeah, it's good food, really good food. And so, for anyone who wants to get started on it, it's it's uh, there's tons of clubs around as well, and it's not a, it's it's bit by bit. It's like going to the gym. You're not gonna, you're not gonna go to the gym and just uh, bench 200 from the 
start. It's, it's small steps, small steps, mm-hmm. and accepting where one is at, and then pushing yourself just beyond that. Mm-hmm. Accepting where you're at there, and then just beyond that. It's 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 that's the fundamental. Very cool. So beyond, like, so uh, other than yoga, other so you mentioned yoga as well. Uh, other than other than the meditation, what helps with the mindset? Are you doing like any sort of like mantras or? Vision boards, like what? What else has have been helping? Uh, no. <laughs> oh yeah, vision uh, vision boards. Uh, I never really got into it for some reason, okay. but visualization is very important. Yes, mm-hmm. um, I like going to the real estate meetings, just learning uh, with others mm-hmm. and and getting in a good group of individuals who are who are learning, who are positive. That makes a huge difference. You, you know the saying: you're we're the, the average of the seven people that we hang around with. Mm-hmm. So that that's uh, that's definitely. Uh, Good. Uh, constantly learning and uh, doing, just just trying a few things out. You know, just just going beyond the, the comfort zone. Um, recently, I'm doing more and more speeches, which I don't know. Five years ago, I wasn't, uh, or even even two years ago, I don't think I would have done as many. I did mm-hmm. a speech at uh, St. Lawrence College for business students. Mm-hmm. It was all about um, they had seen my website, they saw the, some of the videos, and they wanted to learn more about. Uh, about making money. And oddly enough, I spoke about money for maybe the first five minutes of, of the speech. And then mm-hmm. the rest of the speech was all about uh, mindset, was all about skills, was all about value, was all about experiences that they wanted. And in the end, at the, when it came down to asking questions, it was all about money. <laughs> I get where, you're, so I get where I, they're coming from. They often don't understand all the stuff yeah. that comes before making the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to create the value, then the money comes around. So either way, I found it yeah. funny. I think they were just, I mean, they're, they're, they're 21, 22. I, I was the same age. At, at that age, mm-hmm. I was most likely thinking about that as well. So. Well, again, again you're you an archangel. Like before, you even create the value, you have to figure out your why. <laughs> they don't want for like, uh, 22 years yeah, old. They probably don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it's 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 difficult. Even at, even at my age, I, I find it uh, difficult to to find the why. It's not like uh, you find it on, on a weekend. It's a, it's a constant battle. Yeah. Do you know your why? It's constant. It's a constant. It's a constant search. Do I want to know my why? That's that's a good one. Uh, I would say I think back to my parents. They worked hard. They were constantly working hard to to get by, and they did they did well in the end of it. But there were times where I was I felt like my father. He was a great father, but he was constantly working. Mm-hmm. And so, in a way, I was kind of raised by women. Uh, it, was, it was just it was a lot of women around, and it would have been great to have the male presence on a more regular basis. Mm-hmm. And I spend a lot of time, a lot of time with my little daughter, and I feel it's important to be there because at the, at five, like she's five now, those are the times to invest with her, you know beyond the age of zero to six after six, seven, you've been there, but, but it's time is so valuable. Mm-hmm. And I find, uh, time with one's children to be of utmost supports. If you want to change the world, if you want to have a better society or better community it starts with the people around you. So if you could show them love, show them how, how things are done. And a lot of it isn't even done through verbal communication. It's just by how you react or what we do. Mm -hmm. And they need that guidance as well. So my reason for, for investing in real estate is it allows that freedom to then have those options to spend time with the family. So it allows them to grow properly. Renee, this has been an amazing conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. I'm just... uh, you're doing great. Uh, and and, and <laughs> remember those questions I sent you? I didn't ask you one of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yes. We just went down this path, and it's uh, personally, I think this has been amazing. Uh, and I think it's really cool that we talked about a lot of these subjects and I hope, I hope our listeners uh, appreciate it. Uh, like, like we said, like 
you know, I, I know some investors, especially if they're new to this, they're only in this for the money. Uh, they, you know, you have to bring it back mm-hmm. to the why and then everything else makes it a lot easier. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. You have the right mind. Sure. You know the why money, you're doing the, it. The money, will the, the making money. And it seems a bit strange for it, yeah, but making money, it, it comes down to, it's not that difficult. There's so many books, so many other people uh, who tell you how to, how to get money, but to be persistent with it and to keep up with it and then mm-hmm. get, or, or to make, to make a living, to make a, it's not difficult, but to really make a life, that's the challenging part. That's the fun part. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a whole different ball game altogether. Mm-hmm. And I'm not into surviving. I'm into thriving and to really making a huge difference and then showing others that, uh, this is possible. Mm-hmm. If, if, believe me, if I, if, if I did it, then I, I think I'll, anyone can do it. Okay. Renee, I only have your book. For, uh, I struggled for years. Oh, well, yeah, we've all struggled. Uh, okay, so two more questions because I only have you for like a few more minutes. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, where's it, you mentioned uh, you learned a lot by just being around other investors. Like where, were the, where are these places that you would suggest people go to? Oh, yes, uh, this, yes. Yeah, so the... The uh, the club that I really particularly uh, I enjoy is the Durham Real Estate Investment Club. I think Quinton does a great job. There's great speakers, and it's just a good bunch of people. There's a there's a good turnout as well. Mm-hmm. I uh, since I'm in Kingston, <laughs> pardon me. Which it's not fair because you haven't been to my meetings, but you I'm I'm considerably further than. Oh, uh, it's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I would joking. go to all Quinton, the meetings Quinton's if I could. <laughs> Quinton's are in November. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. <laughs> Quentin's been on the yeah. show. He'll be on the and, show again. Uh, He'll be speaking at our November <laughs> event. <laughs> yes, I would go to yours, but Hamilton, yes. Hamilton, uh, it's another an hour. Yes, it's, it would be if a the traffic's much. reasonable. Uh, Brockville. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The traffic is reasonable. Exactly. Uh, Jeff, you know. nice. yeah. So I went to Brockville. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff had uh, some, uh, some good meetings on, on Brockville. That was really good. A lot of fun. And uh, I started the, the Kingston. Well, actually, I didn't start it. Nathan uh, Richard started the Kingston Real Estate Investment Club, but he's got a full time job at the city. Plus, he's got three kids, and he moved to Brockville, so he's um, he's not quite uh, involved with as much. But I've uh, I've since uh, since June I started back the Kingston Real Estate Investment Club, and it, there's there's a following. There's people. There's a demand for it, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Quick story. I'll just do it really quick. One of my first rain. Uh, real estate sure. investment network meetings. Uh, we befriended this couple from Kingston who has student rentals, and they said to us after Acre, I "said ah, Kingston's not on the top ten list. I'm not sure we should be doing this anymore. We already have like you know six or eight properties. We make lots of cash flow though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. Oh, yeah. You guys, they're like cash flow like a thousand bucks a house per month. Like I think you're doing pretty good. Keep going. Yeah. And they, then they yeah. doubled their portfolio yeah. within a year. Yeah. And then they reti- They both retired from their jobs, and they're just killing it. And they never saw them again. <laughs> I mean, we would put too much importance on what's the best market, and, and the, yeah. the way I see it is, any market, there's there's room to, to flourish as long as you yeah. know it well and you got the good connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's tons of opportunities. It's a question of seeing them, understanding them, and just jumping at them. Yeah. Too many people are looking for like the ex- like. The completely intersection of perfect everything. They're looking for the unicorn of real estate. It doesn't exist. <laughs> Which doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't and exist. And often they'll miss opportunities. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful <laughs> opportunities that you or I would get into right, right in front of us. <laughs> yeah, Renee, yeah, yeah, for sure. Renee, this has been a blast. Well, one, one, question, one more question. Uh, one question you said, uh, what, recommendation, what recommendation do I have to get for those getting started? Sure. I, I, would, I would let them know that you got to know what you want. Is it long-term investment? Is it is it the cash flow? Is it passive or active? So that's something to determine. Because some people people want the active part, yeah. but it's it's time-consuming. Mm-hmm. It's not something if you're working nine to five. It's it's second one would be know yourself, know your skills. If you're going to be the active side of it, know what you like to do and then delegate the rest. Mm-hmm. And then the third one would be just jump into the game. You, I mean, one's going to be, you're going to make mistakes, but as long as you're into the game, you'll learn and then you'll move forward. But you got to take action. Right. I would say, <sighs> would, would, I would like to say that the people who think they know what they want, they should definitely bounce it off people who have what they want. And uh, my favorite example is like flippers, mm-hmm. for example, most people who say they want to flip have no idea what it is to flip. 
So I highly recommend they can talk to people <laughs> yeah, yeah. who actually do flip, yeah. and then you make the decision, can I do that? Am I willing to live with that risk, mm-hmm. that, that active investing style, you know, right. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But Brennan, yeah, awesome. different- definitely yeah. need to have you back again. You want to ask you one of those questions I have prepared for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and if you yeah. are ever out in the west end like uh, it'd be cool if we could have you out to speak as well like i don't think we've ever had anyone talk mindset we had, we had we've talked a lot about goal setting but uh it'd be cool to talk more mindset paul yeah yeah that'd be great that'd be great i really enjoy that yeah yeah i mean hamilton's not that far it's only another hour we're, we're or, or in oakville so i just saved you yeah. 25 minutes <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah that's great okay great i'm there let me know all right all right thank you renee Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe on Stitcher, Google Play, or iTunes, however you're listening to this. Or I can send you an email when each episode is published right to your inbox. Simply go to Truth About Real estateinvesting.ca and enter your email address and I will continue to deliver to you stories of inspiration, success, and lessons to help you on your journey to financial freedom. Till next time, this is Erwin Cito telling you to just do it and I believe in you.